Now, you're right. The word yom that's translated day in Genesis 1 has a variety of literal definitions. Actually, four. It can mean the portion of the daylight hours, all of the daylight hours, the 24-hour period, or a long but finite period of time. And incidentally, that's common to uh, nouns in the Hebrew language. Uh, the word earth that you see in Genesis 1 has five different literal definitions. The word heaven has three different literal definitions. And it's simply the result of the fact that in biblical Hebrew, there are very few nouns. So whatever nouns you have, they have to do multiple duty. And in biblical Hebrew, the only word you have to describe a long, finite period of time is that word yom. So if Moses wanted to describe a long period of time, it's the only word he could have used. Now, you heard in my uh, talk how there are 20 major creation accounts in the Bible. Uh, what we do in this book is we take you through those 20 accounts. Because the position we take at Reasons to Believe is that you want to take the Bible both literally and consistently. And so our problem with the 24-hour view is that you've got the 20 different creation accounts contradicting one another. Uh, but if it's six consecutive long periods of time, then all 20 creation accounts uh, are consistent. Now I'll give you a couple of examples. It tells us in Genesis 1 that in terms of the creation of human beings, both the male and the female were created on creation day 6. But in Genesis chapter 2, the second account of creation, we we're told that Adam was created first, outside of the Garden of Eden, then God placed him in the Garden of Eden, and then God had him work the Garden of Eden so that he could learn about the physical creation. Then after that, God told him to name all the birds and mammals in the Garden of Eden so he can learn about that part of creation that's both physical and soulish, birds and mammals being creatures that have mind, will, and emotions. Then God put Adam to sleep, took a biopsy from his side, allowed him to recover from the operation, and he woke up and was introduced to a brand new creature that, like him, was body, soul, and spirit. And in Genesis 2, it actually states the word that came out of the uh, Adam's mouth. It's the Hebrew word hapam. And everywhere else it's used in the Old Testament, it's translated at long last. So several Bible scholars have concluded this isn't a few microseconds at the end of a 24-hour day, rather it's the passage of several weeks, months, maybe even years between the creation of Adam and the creation of Eve. Therefore, the sixth day must be a long period of time. Now, the thing that persuaded me at age 17, reading the Bible for the first time, is that when you look at Genesis 1, you've got an evening and a morning for the first six days. But there's no evening and morning for the seventh day. I looked for it and it wasn't there. Well, the evening and morning minimally would be bracketing the beginning and the ending of each creation day. So it told me day seven, though it had a beginning, had not yet finished. And it's that period of time when God rests from his work of creation. And when I read Genesis 1 at age 17, for me it answered the enigma of the fossil record. When we look before humanity, we see an abundance of scientific evidence for speciation. But after humanity, we don't see any. Well, for six days God creates. On the seventh day he rests. That's why we don't see anything happening now. But that tells us that the seventh day also is a long period of time. And if you want 18 more biblical arguments, then you'll have to get the book. But uh, what I try to do in the book is I finish it off with a set of predictions, saying if the young earth model is correct, this is what scientists and theologians will discover in the next 12 to 18 months. But if the old earth model is right, then the next 12 to 18 months, they will discover opposite things. And so we wait 12 to 18 months and we see whose predictions have come true. Then we can move on to the next church splitting controversy that's got no bearing on salvation doctrine. <laughs>